Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. Well, in this video, what we'll be talking about is fluency itself. I really wanted to make a video about this and maybe just answer a few general related questions to fluency and learning English because people ask me a lot of the same questions, so maybe I'll just answer some of them in this video. If you have other questions that you'd like to have answered, just put them down in the comments and I might make uh, other videos. Uh, I try to do requested videos when I can, but if people have specific questions, and a lot of people like those, so just read through the comments. Maybe somebody already has a question you'd like to answer or have answered. Uh, just click uh, like on that particular comment from someone else and I'll look through the comments and see what people are interested in knowing more about. Anyway, uh, just to begin with, I wanted to talk about what is fluency because people have lots of different definitions of what it means uh, or what a person who is fluent can do. Uh, and in my definition, the way I like to describe it best is that fluency is actually a collection of habits. Now, fluency, most people believe that fluency is like knowing a whole bunch of words. And so that's why they spend a lot of time learning vocabulary as opposed to learning how to weave that vocabulary together. And you would be surprised that there are many adults, so non-native English, English learners that know maybe even like a thousand words or more, and then they're trying to talk with a young child that's maybe two or three years old that's an English speaker, uh, and that child has probably a fairly limited vocabulary. They may know quite a few words like, you know, colors and birds and animals and other things like that, but the advanced speaker or adva the, uh, the learner, I should say, the non-native English learner that knows a whole bunch of words maybe knows lots of advanced words about politics and philosophy and the environment and economics, but they actually can't weave all that information together to speak fluently. Now, it's a little bit confusing for people when they think about speaking a language fluently, so try to think about it as uh, like playing a sport fluently or playing an instrument fluently. These are all things where you're doing something, you're able to take that object, you know, it could be like a, a basketball and where you're dribbling and doing different things with the ball without thinking about it, or you could be playing an instrument where you've got a trumpet in your hand and you're playing it over and over again and trying to do interesting things with that, uh, but you do it without thinking. And the reason you do it without thinking is because you've practiced and you've reviewed it so many times. So language is not a set of uh, ideas or rules that you can just apply whenever you want to, like you're doing a math problem and you know, okay, one plus one equals two, and you're going to practice doing that, and then maybe you like can apply that rule to something else. It doesn't work that way for English because it's almost a physical skill, like you're training your mind and you're training your voice in order to connect and make these different speech patterns and being able to say things when you're understanding and how you're anticipating. All of these things come together to inform and to produce fluent speech. So right now I'm just, I'm speaking fluently, but my vocabulary, maybe I'm not talking about uh, a whole bunch of difficult things or even using a lot of difficult vocabulary, but I'm able to speak in a current, like fluent way, just so I can explain myself with having to think and having to take long pauses in between what I want to say. Now, of course, you can take your time and think, and some people, maybe they ask me a question and I try to be thoughtful about it and take a moment to think about what I'm saying, but it doesn't mean I'm not fluent. I'm able to actually respond and to form a coherent idea and form a uh, like an idea that speaks uh, and expresses myself in a very clear way and a grammatically correct way when I'm speaking. And it's because I've taken the time to practice in the certain uh, way where I'm, I'm trying to develop fluency itself. And again, fluency, it doesn't mean I'm trying to re remember a whole bunch of vocabulary or, le or learn a lot of rules. It means I'm able to produce fluent speech without thinking about it. And it's because I've developed the habits that have helped me do so. Now, a lot of the reason that maybe if you are struggling out there, the reason that you have problems developing uh, fluency or being able to speak fluently is because the traditional language learning methods you use didn't help you develop all of the habits that are required for fluency. Now, fluency, I've been trying to think about fluency uh, and how to explain it in a really simple way for a long time because it, it can be tricky. It's a, it's not really a step-by-step -step process where first you learn this and then you learn that thing and then you do this other thing. It's really, it's almost like a, a web of things that come together. Uh, so when I describe like uh, what I call an English fluency profile, it's all of these different uh, habits that you have, these habits and abilities and how well developed they are individually. So the more well developed each of these habits is individually, the more your overall fluency improves. And so these habits are things like being able to speak confidently or being able to speak fluently, 
uh, or being able to, and this, and when I say fluently, I just mean like continuously and without having to think for long periods of time, uh, or being able to speak uh, using grammatically correct English without taking a lot of time to think about, or any time at all, really, to wonder like, am I using the right grammar point or am I saying the right thing? So all of these things, they come together, and typically the reason non-native speakers don't, uh, don't have the ability to speak fluently or don't have that fluency overall is because they don't have uh, most or all of these habits uh, well developed. They have maybe one or two and these are the things like listening. So this is why a lot of people watch this series and they're thinking, wow, like my understanding of Drew right now in this lesson, like I'm speaking, you know, a little bit faster, but I'm still quite clear about how I speak. And a lot of people are like, wow, I wish every native speaker spoke this way. I wish I could make that happen, but I'm sorry, I can't. The best thing I can do is kind of help train you so that, you know, it doesn't matter what people sound like, because really that's the best kind of feeling you have when you go out and no matter who you're speaking with, you can have great conversations and understand what they're saying. So typically, uh, the reason that people can understand what I'm saying is because I'm speaking clearly, and then they're not able to understand other native speakers or just, you know, lots of people even in movies or TV shows and music because they're not speaking in a clear way. So every person uh, that's a non-native speaker typically... I wouldn't say like 100% of people, but most people, maybe 95% or more, people are learning English in a typical school environment. So when they're young, maybe they go to English classes. If you're in France or China or Brazil, it doesn't really matter. People are typically going to the same English schools. And even if there's a native English speaker there to teach you, that person is not teaching you the same way a native speaker would teach their own children. So the way I, ch I try to teach people and I try to train people uh, is in the same way that I would teach my own daughter. So right now I'm like teaching my daughter. Now, like, it's actually funny to see how, uh, how she's improved with her ability with the English and she, like, she can, she can use, she's about, I'd say a, a year and a month now, or maybe like just over a year old. Uh, but she knows quite a few words. She knows like the word diaper and moon and other things. And I can say, oh, do you want to read this book in here or in the other room? And she will say like over there, you know, and we will walk over to the other room and she understands what I'm saying. And it's interesting that she spends much more time with English, or I should say much more time with uh, Japanese because we're at home and uh, she spends more time with her mom because I'm working or doing whatever it else I have to do. Um, but her English and her use of English is much better than her use of Japanese. And I sometimes do teach her like a few things in Japanese, but I'm focusing much more uh, on English because like she doesn't have as much time with English as she does with Japanese. But it just goes to show you, it's an interesting example of it doesn't matter like where you're living or how much time you spend. It's more if you're doing it in the right way, that's how you're going to develop the habits required to speak fluently. So uh, like a lot of people like thinking about developing these habits, I try to explain to people, I, I, I really make like a strong effort to to explain how this works. It's almost like a chain where you've got many links together and each of these habits is connected as one link in that chain. And if one of those links is really weak, then it makes the entire chain weak as a result. And so if people are sitting and listening to this and they're thinking like, wow, I can understand what Drew's saying, but I have trouble understanding what other native speakers are saying. And I keep learning more words, but I don't feel more fluent. The reason is because you're working on things that you're already strong in. So you're listening to these videos, but you're not also actually trying to go out, and maybe you are, but like maybe not making as much of an effort uh, to develop your fluency through speaking confidence. So if you focus more on your speaking confidence or other things where uh, the things that you're weak at, these other skills, and you develop those, these are the things that make the individual links in those chains uh, or in the chain of your overall fluency much stronger. So that's why fluency is a tricky thing because you can have a really strong vocabulary but really weak fluency because you don't really know how to use all those things together. So if you develop each of the habits that you have, and I learn, I teach people more about this, uh, I'll put a link in the description below the video actually, uh, if you'd like to learn more about that, developing each of the habits uh, that are required for fluency. But the important thing is really just to, to kind of think about what your personal problem is, whatever your biggest fluency frustration is. And for me, like when I came to Japan, I talk about this in videos uh, and I explained that like my biggest fluency frustration was no matter how many more words I learned, it didn't feel like I was getting any more fluent. And so it was really frustrating for me. And if you have a similar thing, it's likely because you're not developing the other habits that are required to speak. And once you develop all those habits together, it's like these like, you know, teams on uh, like Japanese shows for kids where it's like five, you know, ranger guys that get together and they, they 
combine uh, to form some like ultimate, you know, fighting monster robot or something like that. So this is a typical idea of you develop strength in each of these individual things so that when they come together, they produce something that's really strong and that's your overall fluency. So I'll just leave maybe the uh, the question open for you if there's other particular questions you'd like to know about, about learning English, about how to do this or how to do that, whatever those things are. But for this video, I'd really like you to just focus on whatever you're weakest in. Try to focus on that first and try to focus on that thing specifically without worrying about how do I learn more words or other things And because it's very easy to want to do those things like just to sit back and watch more YouTube videos. I mean, it's great if you want to watch more. Uh, you will learn more by doing that, but you will improve your fluency much more by actually using it. So fluency is like a muscle that you develop with use, and you won't develop the use of it by just watching videos. Anyway, that's what I'd uh, like to leave you with for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do like the video. Uh, you can visit us at EnglishAnyone.com and learn more about how you can get fluent many, many times faster, two, three, or even ten times faster, just by focusing on the thing that you struggle the most with. It's actually a really simple idea, and it's what helped me and my personal students get fluent, and so that's what I'd like to help you do as well. Anyway, if you're interested in that, you can visit us at EnglishAnyone.com to learn more about that. But do like the video, become a subscriber to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and uh, do let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions. I look forward to hearing from you and to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.